I'm speaking with uh, Richard Esguera from uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. How are you doing today, Richard? I'm doing okay. And yourself? I'm doing excellent. Good. And uh, we're here at B-Sides. Uh, you guys have your uh, booth. You're ever-present at all the B-Sides, uh, especially Las Vegas, San Francisco. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what the uh, EFF has been doing uh, in regards to uh, the response to the disclosures about the NSA spying program, uh, domestic uh, surveillance, uh, whatever you want to call it. Sure. Um, so I guess one of the most, the biggest things that's happened is um, we filed a new lawsuit against the NSA. Um, it's called First Unitarian Church v. NSA. And what EFF is doing in that case is representing about 19 different groups um, in a case about the right of the right of association or the right of assembly, um, and so uh, this is a case that's uh, using some of that new evidence of uh, of NSA spying, uh, the use of the uh, Patriot Act Section 215, uh, the order to collect business records. Um, that's the evidence in the case, and it's it's basically a First Amendment challenge to uh, those spying programs, um, and so that's that's the new lawsuit, and, and we're we're uh, it, it's we're, we're excited about it and, and hope that it it has a lot of energy and, and focus well, a, a lot of people might not understand I mean they, they see uh, this in the context of national security uh, uh, you know they've got nothing to hide uh, you know why would I be bothered uh, as a business or as an individual that the NSA might be uh, uh, documenting uh, my conversations uh, looking at my communication so you know if I've got nothing to hide why, why is that so egregious? Well, it really comes down to that basic right, and, and I think the right of association is an interesting fact to take about this, because if you imagine, you know, what they're collecting is all of those uh, call records data, so they know who called who when, and uh, once you can sort of, what, once you have that information, you can really start to piece together very intimate personal details about that person, or that group, or that organization. Um, and. For the government to have that power without any kind of check or any kind of meaningful oversight is just not, it's not what this country is about and it opens up other kinds of abuses that we may not be able to see now or that could happen in the future. So this is really about preserving the fundamental rights that make the, make democracy possible, that make it possible to have a free society. Um, again, it's a First Amendment case, so this is what makes free speech possible. It makes it possible to talk to your friends and neighbors and your communities about the issues that you care about, about the change you want to see. Um, these are the kinds of things that are, are sort of fundamental American values, um, fundamental democratic values, and they're being undermined by these programs that we um, have not really been allowed to, to analyze or see. Um, so that's the hope. Um, actually, in this case, um, is a companion to another case that we have going on where the purpose is to uh, stop these uh, sort of super broad programs, but also to find out what's going on. I mean, that's really a, a huge piece of this is just so we can identify are these are these programs going on and at what scale they're going on and a lot of this new information is confirming things that we've sort of suspected or that we've tried to identify through other means through Freedom of Information Act lawsuits for example um, and and so we're really starting to see the huge huge broad scale of, of, of this uh, intrusion on, on privacy and what we're what we're sort of alleging in this new case this harm to our freedom to uh, freedom to associate, which is a, a key part of free speech. Yeah, well, of course, nobody on either side of the issue wants to see, uh, you know, any uh, kind of tragic thing befall us. Uh, you know, national security is obviously very, very important. So, so what's the what's a better process? What's a happy medium where we can we can still guarantee that uh, that the agencies that need access to uh, certain kinds of intelligence can get what they need, but we're not losing uh, our, our First Amendment rights? Sure. I think that uh, in large part, real oversight is what matters here, right? Um, where you have a court where the requests are seen in public. You have uh, uh, mechanisms where uh, the collection isn't happening in ways that, that, that only a small group, a small group in Congress can see. I think that's a big piece of how we ensure that the programs don't expand to this huge scope, but are still focused on things that really matter, still focused on, um, on effective techniques. I think uh, right now we don't really have that knowledge. We don't really even know is this what it takes? Is this what it takes to have security? If, is, does it take the collection of every 
everybody's call records? Does it take complete introspection on people's internet behavior? Um, I think uh, many people would argue that it, it probably doesn't take that. I think that you know to obtain the security would rely on uh, sort of sort of police work. But right now we can't even really have the discussion, or we don't even have the tools to look at look at cause and effect and uh, analyze outcomes. I think that that that's probably a, a first step. I think towards getting to a better system, a better solution. And another high-profile uh, issue that C, um, or that the EFF is working on is the the reform of the uh, CFA. Yeah, that's right. Fraud Act. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. Um, so the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act was, was passed uh, many years ago, um, and what we've seen recently is that it's a, it's kind of a, 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 a legal tool for prosecutors, and it's, it's really ripe for uh, misuse or abuse, basically to amp up any kind of, uh, any kind of computer-related uh, crime or prosecution. Um, the, the real sort of uh, tragic experience of this was earlier this year when uh, Aaron Schwartz, who's a, a respected, uh, a respected uh, technologist and activist, um, was uh, prosecuted under the CFA and, and, and committed suicide. Um, and what we see or what we know of the CFA is that essentially uh, it's very broad drafting. Uh, the, the, the way it describes a computer crime is so broad um, that it can really just be used to just tack on, tack on a lot, uh, uh, tack on years, tack on penalties um, in a prosecution situation. And we don't think that's right. And we, and we can uh, talk about the many different cases where it's been used in that way, it's been misused in that way. And so with CFA reform, what we're advocating for is we're advocating for um, a change to the law to make it more specific. Right now, it, right now it says something very broad about exceeding authorization, um, which is something that all or many computer security researchers are probably familiar with as a normal part of part of doing their job. Um, but we think that it should be more specific. That um, when you exceed something, it, it, it exceeds in a specific in a specific way or against a specific uh, uh, sort of provision. And and a guess, lot of it come down to intent. Yeah, the, I mean, if you're a vulnerability researcher, uh, you know your intent obviously is not to uh, uh, any kind of malfeasance. Yeah, it's it's about it, there's there's definitely a piece about intent. There's also a piece about harm. Um, it's not really reflected in the current law. So uh, the uh, leading proposal right now is called Aaron's Law, um, and it's a proposal that reforms parts of the CFAA. Um, it actually has good momentum in Congress, and so while we're here at the security conferences, we're going to be trying to rally support for for this particular law and also for. Or CFA reform generally. That um, this is this is a, a, a law that's long overdue for for a correction. Um, when they were writing it, you know, um, the the story is basically that they wrote it um, around the time that the movie War Games came out, um, and so it, it just does not reflect an accurate understanding of what um, what computer work is like nowadays. What computer security work is nowadays. Um, the fact that the CFA is uh, applied to terms of service violations, for example, and there's a very common knowledge right now that terms of service uh, are kind of overblown and um, they're things that people don't read and yet can in many ways fall afoul of um, for very ordinary behavior like using a pseudonym or, you know, those are, those are different um, Different pieces that show how sort of out of control the CFA is and really needs a fix um, because our technology is, is, and our use of technology is really outpaced what it was intended to address. Well, Richard, thanks a lot for taking the time to uh, explain a couple of these really important issues uh, sure. uh, with the uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation and uh, uh, have a great week. Cool. You too. Thank you so much for chatting.